Hello everyone. Are you like me, finished Endwalker, and feeling like all of the emotions that you could possibly feel in your lifetime being sucked out of your body? After working through the final quest and rolling credits, I just sat there trying to comprehend what I experienced. And so many thoughts crowded into my brain, it took me a little while to process it all. But now that I have been able to sit and think about it some more, and also start watching other people's responses to the same quests, I'm starting to think about a variety of topics related to Final Fantasy, specifically Endwalker. Today I want to have a look at Xenos. I want to consider the three ways that he really impacts the story and the ways that we can look at him, the ways we can view his role in the story. After all, you might think, well, isn't he just the bad guy? And I would say, yeah. I mean, on the most superficial level, we can say he's the bad guy. He is what we would call the antagonist in the story, the person that the hero or the protagonist must fight. And at first glance, Xenos certainly is a very typical one-dimensional bad guy who has no sympathetic or complex reasons for what he's doing. He's just like a form of chaotic evil. But I started thinking about that final dialogue scene and I started to look through it again and I came away feeling that although the character of Xenos is on the surface rather simple, there's a lot more going on in how he was used and the way he was presented to us. So let's take a little closer look at one of the best villains of Final Fantasy XIV. So the first thing that we can read into Xenos is the obvious fact that he is a foil for the Warrior of Light. In literature, foil is used to describe a person that sets off the main character. Usually this is to make the main character stand out or give the main character moments to shine or to not shine, but to show themselves more clearly. And I think Xenos does play this part, which is so significant in the story. Without Xenos, I don't think we would feel the same specialness that we do at the end. After all, Xenos represents the complete opposite to us. Our character has found meaning in their life through friendships. As a result, our character is more focused on seeking peace and being a positive force in the world as best as they are able to. Xenos, on the other hand, represents the road not taken by the Warrior of Light. If this was an RPG, Xenos would be an example of a character that we could become if we took all of the negative choices. As a result, Xenos really does represent nihilism in its most vivid kind of sense. He has no goals. He basically is a negative force in the world, causing untold tragedies, simply because he is pursuing an emotional high that he needs. But the thing is, Xenos is still a foil because he provides an obstacle for us. You know, up until that point in Stormblood, I felt pretty bamf. I, I felt like I was in control. Yeah, some trials and dungeons were really difficult and hard to get through. But overall, in the story, I felt like I was going to survive anything. But then Xenos came along, and suddenly I was doubting my abilities. I was doubting my ability to stay alive, <laughs> and I was doubting my ability to save my friends. And in this sense, Xenos is really the only person who provides real competition for us. He's really the one that really makes you feel like there is real danger out there. And they set him early on in Stormblood because after ARR, you're feeling yourself pretty good. And after Heaven's Word, 
you're still feeling pretty good. But storm blood is kind of where you get a smack upside the head and it prepares you for a larger problem that is the final days of Meteon. But Xenos is more personal. And in that sense, that's where the real competition and the real annoyance and the real danger lies. He is that person that's always hanging over your shoulder. And he becomes a part of you to a certain degree. Therefore, we could imagine Xenos as black to our white. But that would be reducing him to a fairly obvious reading. We can look at him a second way. We could look at him as a reflection or as a mirror to our character in the story. That is to say, we can look at it as being more than simple good versus evil, but closer to the concept of yin and yang. That is to say, there is in this character a warning about the dangers of psychological, emotional, and spiritual imbalance in one's life. You see, in Final Fantasy fourteen, light versus dark isn't really a question of morality. It's actually a question of energies. Light tends to ward being passive. It's all about preservation and stasis. There is an idea that it's linked to peace and tranquility, but too much light, like too much dark, as we saw in Shadowbringers, is dangerous. Darkness, on the other hand, is linked to energy and activity. Certainly, negative aspects might include chaos, but overall, the idea in the story over and over again is that you really need to have a little bit of both. And that's where we can start looking at our actions, the actions of our character in the game. And we realize that, yeah, wow, the Warrior of Light does get into a lot of fights. And in fact, at the end, he cannot deny Xenos his fight either. In this sense, we could say that as Xenos is a reflection of the Warrior of Light, so on some level, the Warrior of Light has within him the same qualities that Xenos has. But unlike Xenos, light and dark within the Warrior of Light is more balanced. Xenos has completely given in to his inner demons. And that started me thinking about the idea of Xenos being a metaphor of the dark side of the Warrior of Light. This is linked to Jungian psychoanalysis. When we use psychoanalysis in literature, we can talk about the shadow. The shadow archetype is really about your unconscious mind, your repressed ideas, your repressed weaknesses or desires, your instincts or your shortcomings. And oftentimes when you give into this shadow self, you will appear not at your best. You will show the worst aspects of yourself. And many people will often take those aspects of themselves that they hate and they will project it onto other people. And it's very possible that Xenos is in fact a projection of those things deep down inside us, deep down inside the warrior of light that have not been maybe fully faced, but certainly have to a certain degree assimilated. Because of this quality in the Warrior of Light, where they were able to balance the light and the dark. Because of this, the Warrior of Light is able to affect change in the world for the better. The Warrior of Light is not given simply to maintaining peace and remaining in stasis. The Warrior of Light, when necessary, is able to make change and to take action. And of course, you might start thinking, well, if Xenos is reflecting aspects of the warrior of light. Does that mean that he is reflecting aspects of the gamer? And that's where I think something really interesting happens, where we can read, thirdly and finally, that Xenos is in fact a form of yourself, potentially. In this sense, if we were to look at the final conversation, 
Zenos talks to the warrior of light and says, Such pleasures you seek for their own sake, and no other reason. Is this not so, adventurer? This line shows that Zenos is calling out the warrior of light and pointing out that the warrior of light isn't just in it for the moral reasons, but is also in it for the adventure. But we could argue that Zenos is flirting with the fourth wall here. Now, the fourth wall is this invisible kind of divide between you, the reader, and the characters in the book. Most of the time when you read a book, the characters only interact with the characters that are in the world that they are placed in. But in some rare occasions, writers will break the fourth wall and characters will speak to you, the reader. In this case, I don't think the fourth wall is really broken, but there is enough dialogue here to suggest that Zenos is calling you, the player, out. Now, what is he asking? Well, he's asking, why are you fighting? Why are you playing this game? Now, the reality is, is that most of us, we are playing Final Fantasy XIV because it's fun, because we like the story, because we fell in love with these characters. But I think we can all agree that we don't really play video games for ethical or moral reasons. We don't actually think that when we play this game, we will change the world. Rather, we pursue these games because of either competition or accomplishment. And many of us, especially those who are more into hardcore raiding and getting all of the mounts and everything, many of us really pursue that sense of accomplishment. It's not about helping the sprouts all the time. It isn't always about helping people. It isn't always about thinking deep thoughts on existentialism. It's not always thinking about compassion or, or generosity. It's also about feeling amazing and powerful because in our lives, we don't always feel that way. At least I don't anyway. So when we play Final Fantasy, we're pursuing it because we want adventure in our lives. We want to be heroes in our lives. We want to affect change in our lives. And we can role play that or practice that in the game. This makes Final Fantasy XIV a very special game in my opinion. But Xenos <laughs> isn't afraid to call us out a little bit. He is offering a challenge to the player, to us, and asking us to consider how we are viewing this game, how we are viewing gaming and even conflict in our lives. I think there's a precedence for this already with the Dark Knight quests, because the Dark Knight is essentially a certain part of our psyche that we don't want to face. And I would argue that Xenos plays the role of embodying those worst attributes in all of their glory. So even though Xenos himself isn't multifaceted, he doesn't have any sympathetic or even very clear reason why he's doing what he's doing. He instead represents a concept about ourselves as gamers and ourselves as the warrior of light. He is a challenge as well, some viewers felt. He was a challenge to the Emmett Silk fans because if you have one person causing tons of death for sympathetic reasons, it just feels more validated than someone who causes tens of thousands of deaths for very simple or no reason. And in a sense, I think there is a dialogue to be had about why we pursue these games. I don't think that the writers of Final Fantasy XIV necessarily meant this to be in the story, but it would be cool if they did, if only because it opens up a conversation about 
the role of competition and adventure and conquest in our lives. I think we all need to have it. The problem is that Zenos is an example of someone who is simply given over to it. This person has very little balance within themselves and having given into their shadow entirely with nothing really to fill in the gaps. He is a warning to us that balance in our life is key, not just as the warrior of light, but also as gamers. So what did you guys think about Xenos? Did you guys feel sad when he was left alone there lying on the ground? I wonder if he's actually dead, to be honest. I could see him coming back in a couple of expansions to do something crazy again. I definitely believe that we saw something happening within Xenos in Endwalker where he began to realize he had made some mistakes and that he was willing to meet us literally part way. On the other hand, I don't know if Xenos will really go anywhere beyond this. But even if this was his swan song, I think he provided us with a lot of things to think about that makes his contribution to the story supremely important. Just like Emmet Selk, Vothri, Ilbird, all of these people provide us with different reasons why someone is going to be, you know, go evil. I think Xenos does something really different. Instead of giving us something sympathetic where we start to feel bad, he's like, no, no, I'm just the worst part of you. And I'm here. And you have to beat the worst part of you in order to move forward. Because when you admit to your monster, then you can tame your monster. And then you can take the energy from your monster and move forward. And that is, I think, the lesson that we can gain from Xenos. You let me know what you think uh, and share your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys next time.